We need to learn what to do when guilt feelings resurface. Even after we've dealt with them, we've gone through the process I've talked about, and even though intellectually we understand that all of my sins are out of God's sight, out of God's reach, out of God's mind, guilt feelings will resurface. This will happen through some of the sources we talked about earlier. What do you do when they resurface, even after you've gone through all this process? Let me give you some direction from God's Word. Here's the way that we should respond when guilt feelings resurface. First of all, recognize that the author of those memories from the past is Satan. He's the accuser of the brethren. And we must recognize where they're, where they're coming from because they're certainly not coming from God. But where are they coming? Maybe Satan's using other people or situations, but fundamentally, and at the root, there's Satan because he's the accuser of the brother. And he wants to keep you pinned down with feelings of guilt. And if he can do that, he knows you're not going to be effective for him or for Christ or for his kingdom. So recognize that. And somebody said, when Satan reminds you of your past, you remind Satan of his future, and you resist him in the name of Christ. Secondly, once I recognize the author, is I resist Satan's accusations. How do you do that? Well, you don't let him set the agenda. When those feelings come up to me from the past, I have to verbally resist Satan using scripture. Some of the scripture we talked about, God, Satan, you bring that up, but you need to know that God has removed that from me as far as the east is from the west. And I'm not going to let you accuse me or hassle me over that. That is done. It's gone. It's out of God's sight. It's out of God's reach. It's out of God's mind. And on the basis of the finished work of Jesus Christ, I resist you, depart from me. You do that. Because the Bible talks about in Ephesians 6 that the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. It's the only real offensive weapon we have. What did Jesus do when Satan came to him and tempted him? Three times, every time, Satan would come to him and Jesus would say, it is written, it is written. It is written, and eventually Satan left and departed. And he'll quit hassle on you, but he'll keep tormenting you and accusing you and bringing up the past and putting memories in your mind as long as you let him set the agenda. But you say, no, you're not going to set the agenda. God has already declared that I am forgiven, I'm free. And Satan, get out of my life, leave me alone, you resist him on the basis of the word. That may not be uh, something you're really comfortable with at first, but I encourage you to do it, do it verbally. You may just do it to yourself at first, you remind yourself, but there comes a point where the Bible says resist the devil, submit yourself to God, which you've done, and resist the devil and he will flee from you. And sometimes I've let Satan hassle me a lot more than he needs to. And I finally realize what's happening. I say, wait a minute. <laughs> Satan, get out of here. Get out of my life. God has said, and use the scripture, and he flees. Another thing that we can do when uh, guilt feelings come up again is to remember, remind ourselves of God's grace demonstrated at the cross. The purpose of the cross is to repair the irreparable. And when Jesus said, it is finished, that's exactly what he meant, paid in full. Colossians 2, 13 through 15 says, he forgave us all our sins, having canceled the written code with his regulations that was against us and opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it to his cross. C.S. Lewis said it this way, 
I think if God forgives us, we must forgive ourselves. Otherwise, it's almost like setting ourselves up as a higher tribunal than God himself. If the God of the universe says you're forgiven, who are you to withhold forgiveness from yourself? People say, I can't forgive myself. God never asked you to forgive yourself. God asked you to accept his forgiveness of you. You understand? Very important that you understand what was done at the cross and that God has forgiven you. And remind yourself, you need to remind yourself of these truths again and again. Remember what happened at the cross. It was all nailed there. And you've dealt with it. God has dealt with it. It's done. So based on that, you need to refuse the tendency to punish yourself by remembering and rehearsing your sin. Some people, for whatever reason, kind of a perverted reason, they feel like they still need to punish themselves. They still need to say, you don't know what I've done. You don't know how bad it was. You don't know how much I've sinned. And they beat themselves up. And they rehearse the sin and they want to talk to people about it. And I tell people, stop it. Stop it. Why are you punishing yourself? Making yourself pay. Are you saying that what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you was not enough? And you have to add to it by punishing yourself or doing penance? No. No. He has forgiven you and you have to refuse that tendency to punish yourself. Lastly, rejoice in God's complete forgiveness and sing his praises. And I find that to be so helpful. I can't sing, I'm not a singer, but I like to keep a hymnal near me. And I like to read a hymn and sing it in my own mind, not out loud, because I would bother other people. But I rejoice, and I find a hymn that speaks of that. Love so amazing, so divine, divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not like my Lord was crucified. But pardon there was great and grace was free. Hallelujah, what a savior. And you begin to go through, you have your own hymns, whatever language you're speaking, find hymns that speak about the cross, and rejoice and sing and praise God. And when those feelings start come, what you do, you offset them immediately by praising God and worshiping him. Listen to this psalm, Psalm 40. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a solid ground. He steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, hymn of praise to our God. That was after a big fall. David had big falls. David broke four of the last five of the Ten Commandments, one right after the other. He writes these Psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is with me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget that all his benefits, who forgives all your sins, who removes them as far as the east is from the west. And as you begin to get into a mode of praising God, not reconfessing, not beating yourself up, not allowing Satan to pound you with those guilt feelings. No, you remember the scriptures that we've talked about, what God has done, and you begin to rejoice and you begin to praise God. And you just stand amazed, amazed at his grace, amazed at his kindness, amazed at his mercy. And whenever those guilt feelings come again, I trust that you will go back through this material and you will review, review, review until it becomes a reality in your own life. And I would encourage you to go through those scriptures very carefully and ask yourself, am I free of guilt and guilt feelings? If not, why not? It may be one of those things that we mentioned in this lecture. If it is, then deal with that and live 
in the freedom that is yours as a child of God. Remember the verse. And this will apply when we talk in the next lecture about bitterness and about anxiety. I run in the way of his commandments because he set my heart free. God wants your heart to be free, free of guilt, free of bitterness, free of anxiety. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.